that you've picked out your container and you've made up some worm bedding, it's time to get some worms. But what kind of worms should you get? Now there's really three major uh, types of worms, or most popular types. And that's all I'm going to cover on this video. There are lots of videos out there that uh, describe the worms, show you how to identify the worms, and go into great detail about the worms. But what this video is intended to do is just to tell you what type of worm to get for your new worm bin. Because the type of worm that you get is going to be definitely dependent on where you live, where you're going to put the system, and what you want, again, out of the system, what kind of casters you want. Probably the most popular worm out there is the red wiggler. The red wigglers are real small. They're anywhere from an inch and a half to maybe three inches long. They're widely used. Uh, lots of people use the red wiggler. And rightfully so, they're a very durable worm. They can handle a lot of different uh, circumstances, a wide range of temperatures. Red wigglers live normally in about the top four inches of your bedding. So they won't go down in deep into the bedding. They normally produce about three to four cocoons a week. And out of each of those cocoons, they'll normally hatch on an average of about two, possibly three worms per cocoon. Red wigglers mature fairly quickly too, in about 10 weeks. So 10 weeks from the time they're hatched until the time they start laying cocoons. The temperature range that red wigglers can handle is probably part of the reason why they're one of the most popular worms. They can actually handle temperatures into the 30s. And actually if you take some uh, precautions and a little effort and insulate the bin and stuff, they can actually handle into the freezing areas as long as you have a large bin. But uh, they're tough. I mean the 30 degrees and they can take temperatures all the way up into the upper 90s. So they have this huge gauntlet of temperature that they can uh, be active in and produce in. The next worm I want to talk about is the European night crawlers. Now European night crawlers are easily twice as big as uh, red wigglers. But they're great fishing worms. They're large size, they wiggle an awful lot, so fishermen really like them. The problem with European night crawlers is they have a much shorter lifespan. Uh, European night crawlers can live you know, just around a year, where red wigglers can live for several years. They also have a slower reproduction rate. They only produce about one to two cocoons a week, and out of each of those cocoons, normally you only get one to two worms out of each one of them. It also takes longer for European night crawlers to mature, uh, normally about 11 weeks, so at least another week beyond what the red wigglers do. Temperature range? Temperature range, European night crawlers are pretty good there. They can handle temperatures down you know, about into the 30s, into the 40s for sure, and temperatures up into the 90s and do pretty well. Now when you get to either of these extremes, to the 30s, 40s, 90s, the worm's going to slow down on either side. Because ideally, worms like the temperature that we like. If you're comfortable, the worms are comfortable. The last worm I'm going to talk about is probably my favorite, and that's the African night crawlers. African night crawlers get big. They're commonly over 6 inches and upwards to about 12 inches long. And if you feed them right, you can actually fatten them up kind of at that length. And they make super good fishing worms. And again, you don't have to refrigerate them. They're kind of like the European night crawlers. They can handle those warm temperatures, so in the water they're going to be very active. African night crawlers produce a lot of cocoons. Anywhere from three to five cocoons a week for each uh, mature worm. And African night crawlers mature very rapidly. Normally about five to six weeks from the time they hatch to become an adult and start laying cocoons. The drawback on African night crawlers is their temperature range. They still have a fairly wide temperature range. Uh, you read things and they say down into the 40s, but when you get down into the 40 degree mark for African night crawlers, they're basically shutting down and doing nothing. Even in the 50s, they're pretty much, they're not eating too much, they're very inactive. 
Once you get into the 60s, they'll do a little bit more. They really like that 70 to 80 range, maybe the low 90s. You get them colder than 40, or actually get them below 50, and you're going to risk killing them. And African night crawlers tend to migrate throughout the bend a little bit deeper than uh, for sure red wigglers. Red wigglers stay at the top. The European night crawlers also tend to go a little bit deeper. And I say African night crawlers don't like being disturbed. I haven't really noticed that in my bends. I mean, I don't think any of the worms really like being disturbed. I churn mine up all the time as I'm doing videos and stuff, and I haven't noticed any ill effects by it. So what worms should you get for your system? Well, there's a lot of factors that go into determining that. Probably the number one factor is where are you going to put your bin at? Uh, if you're going to be running your bin outside, then you're basically restricted to the weather environment that out, you know, the temperature that it is in your area. If it gets down below 50 degrees, then African night crawlers aren't going to work in your area. Now you live in Alaska, and you're going to put it in a heated garage, African night crawlers will do just fine there. How many castings do you want to produce? Uh, as far as volume, the African night crawlers would probably produce more casting than either the Europeans or the red wigglers. Now, another thing I do on my bends is I have pretty much mixed African night crawlers, European night crawlers, and red wigglers together in most of my bends. And to me, it works fine. I don't sell worms and stuff, so I'm not worried about having one specific species that I'm going to send out. So I'm just going for the castings. Now, if you were selling worms, you would want to just keep one particular type. People don't like getting red wigglers when they're expecting European night crawlers. So if that's the case, then you want to only go with one particular variety. But the advantages I see of having multiple worms in a bin is that the worms work different levels of the compost. Whereas the red wigglers tend to work the upper areas really exclusively almost. The European night crawlers and African night crawlers will go to the deeper areas and come back up. They, they cover a much wider area. And I think over time, if you have European night crawlers in a bin, I think they're going to get overrun and basically dominated by the red wigglers and the African night crawlers. Now the African night crawlers and the red wigglers, I think eventually there, possibly the African night crawlers would basically become the dominant one. But not necessarily if you have a system that uh, has some wide temperature ranges. Because once the temperature starts getting down, let's say in the fall and you get into the 50s or low 60s, the African night crawlers aren't going to produce and reproduce as fast as you know they possibly can because the temperature is too cold. But yet the red wigglers are going to be doing fine because they can handle that wide range. So maybe in the winter months and the colder months, the red wigglers will catch up. And then in the summertime, they'll lose ground again because the African night crawlers do so well in the warm temperatures. So, and there's other worms out there as well. I'm not covering them all. Those are the three major types. And you can't go wrong with any one of those. I mean, any of those types of worms will really produce nice castings. They're fairly easy to uh, maintain. And there's a lot of sources for all those different types of worms online. Uh, you can pick up African night crawlers now from many different places and red wigglers and European night crawlers. So there's not really one best worm for everybody because again it depends kind of on the situation you're in and what you want from the system. Now a lot of people say well will, will your bin support uh, African night crawlers or will it support red wigglers? You can put any worm basically in any container. It isn't really the container that matters. It, it's how you manage that container, what you feed that container, the temperature you have that container in. So you can put African night crawlers in anything from a Rubbermaid tub to a hungry bin to a vermi bag. You can put red wigglers in all those. As long as the system is at least 12 inches deep, all of those worms are going to do just absolutely fine in that system. 
So hopefully that helps you understand the three most common types of composting worms. It's by no means comprehensive of everything, but there's a lot of videos online that will show you how to identify the different types of worms, uh, what the exact lifespan of each of them are, their lengths, I mean the scientific names of all of them. Any of those three types of worms would work very well in your new system. And all of them would do well on the bedding that we just made on the last video. I hope you found this video helpful. And if you need more information, I mean, just go online, YouTube. There are a lot of videos out there that go really in depth on the worms. But I would recommend one of those three types of variety for your new system. The next video I'm going to go over controlling moisture in your worm bin. Now whether that be a you know, Rubbermaid tub or a vermi bag, any type of system, there's a lot of different ways that you can control the moisture. And controlling the moisture is important if you want to maintain a good system. So that's all for today. This is Tom from Vermi Bag. Until next time, ciao.